Welcome to the November 1st, 2018 ZBA meeting. I want to remind everybody that the meeting's being taped. So our first order of business will be to look at the minutes from the last meeting. Vote on them. Has everybody had an opportunity to look at the minutes? Yes. Make a motion to accept the motion. Okay, a second. A second. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the minutes from last meeting? All right. Aye. Opposed? Okay, unanimous. Just want to take a moment to explain the order that we're going to try to follow tonight. The first, we're going to hear from the applicants and their request, and they can add relevant information. Um, then we'll listen to people from the public who are in favor, those opposed follow. The board will discuss uh, any anything with the with any questions. Um, then I'll I'll offer the opportunity for the applicant to withdraw their request without prejudice. And then lastly, the board will vote um, on the matter. Anybody wanting to speak uh, will be recognized by the chair. Come to the microphone. State your name and address. All remarks addressed through the chair at the microphone. Um, we were told that there's also going to be an extra microphone if somebody's here and um, there needs to be an extra question or two or something cleared up, there's an additional microphone. Um, and lastly, all comments should be respectful. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, we're going to proceed on the bed and breakfast one to start with. The first thing that we're going to... Um, take care of is the bed and breakfast. It is closed. It is a closed meeting. Um, all of public comment. Uh, all, yeah, closed to comments. All of the correspondence that we got will be made public record. However, I'm not going to read anything. It's all it, because it is a closed meeting. So the first thing I'm going to do is ask uh, Mr. Kalashevsky to report what town council advised us and then I will um, give the applicants the opportunity to withdraw or proceed, and then we'll have a vote. Rich? The first thing I did was clarify the difference between a bread and breakfast and a boarding house. The bed and breakfast, whether it be an Airbnb or regular bed and breakfast, is just an advertising situation. The difference between a bed and breakfast and a boarding house is the bed and breakfast offers a room with breakfast served. The boarding house offers no food. The second difference between the two is the bed and breakfast must be owner occupied. I'll clarify that because there was questions about number of owners. It is not the number of owners that counts, it's the number of owners that are residents that count. So the other owners can live out of town and as long as some of the owners are on premises accounts. The boarding house is a different situation where owners do not have to occupy that, so it's a non-owner occupied and becomes commercial status. The next question that was asked, or one of the questions, was how many people can live in the house? <clears throat> that drops back to the health code and building code for room sizes. There can be up to six rooms in a bed and breakfast or up to six rooms in a boarding house. So. I think that pretty much clarifies that, okay? I'll clarify what Frank just said about the board members have received copies of letters from uh, Butters. They all can read those. They just cannot discuss those uh, since the meeting is closed. So unless they choose to open the meeting up, no one can ask questions about those letters, and that's it. Thanks, Rich. Okay, at this time I'd like to make a motion to vote. Uh, well, let me back up. Uh, there will be five members voting on the bed and breakfast application. Mm -hmm. Frank, you yep. need, to, and ask, you need to have discussion before you motion to vote. Okay, yeah. okay. Between the members. Okay. Does anybody want to discuss or any questions? I know we discussed it at length already. Any, any questions that come up after what Rich has found? No. 
I think is part of the part of what we're going to vote on is to grant the permit if we chose so choose to with certain conditions mm -hmm. and those should all be part and parcel of the motion okay and if, if some people would prefer to to do it on a with less restrictions or more restrictions or what have you they have the opportunity and uh, I think Kathy summarized them uh, making sure that we have all the stuff that we want to pinpoint and uh, if she, she I'm more than happy for her to make the motion I just want to make sure that that uh, some of the things that we discussed are actually incorporated in the motion so that there will be there will be complete clarity Mm -hmm. going forward and there won't be any misunderstanding as to what's voted and what's not voted okay you want to read those Kathy one more time sure <clears throat> uh, the conditions the bed and breakfast must be owner occupied more specifically guests are only allowed when Fred or Roswitha are present the bed and breakfast will be closed when um, Fred and Roswitha uh, Berwick are out of town. The B&B &B can offer up to two rooms total for guests. The B&B &B will not function as an event venue for guests of the B&B. &B. The Board of Health Inspector or the Building Inspector will conduct an annual review of the B&B &B to ensure codes and conditions are followed. Any written complaints will be forwarded to the ZBA. The permit will expire when Fred and Roswitha are no longer living at 194 Lower Road. The permit will expire in two years, and the permit is not transferable. Thanks, Kathy. So, no questions? All... Okay. So, at this time, I want to ask, you want to withdraw your application or proceed to the vote? Proceed to the vote. Okay. Thank you. Make a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion with the items stipulated by the clerk she just read into the record uh, that we grant the permit subject to those conditions and that in two years uh, I have to file another application come back before the board either for a modification or a continuance second second okay. all members in favor in, in favor of granting the application I'm not in favor of it. You're in favor? You're not in favor? You're in favor? You're in favor? No, I'm not in favor. So we have three. Four. three. Two. Okay. Two. So at this time, we'll have to decline the application. Applications okay. denied. The application's denied, yeah. So we have to fill out that form and make sure that it gets uh, uh, to the town clerk, and I think it also gets recorded in registry deeds. Am I right or wrong? No? I don't know. Anyway, whatever gets done town clerk. goes to the town clerk. So, so what I'm going to do is. So everybody signs it? Yep. And then puts whether they put. Yes or no. Do you have a pen? Yes. <coughs> Dick Kalashevsky not I a member. Say, that's not a member. That's not a member. <laughs> that's a member. put something up in here uh, with conditions right I have a, a draft copy okay so you're going to attach it yes all right so just put C attached okay but yeah what, what we voted on yeah but I mean you got to make sure it gets attached
Chairman. Was the count? Was the vote three to two? Three in favor, two opposed. Chairman, yes. I'm going to go to the back of the room and not participate in the zoning. This, the next item on the agenda for the Zoning Board of Appeals mm -hmm. is I am a member of the Deerfield Industrial Development Board. Okay. And uh, I believe I'm in possibility of a conflict of interest. Okay. If, if it becomes a necessity that I participate, uh, I would only do it in that manner. Okay. okay. And that would have to be at the request of the petitioner. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Okay. I'm sorry. <clears throat> yes. I understand that um, it, oh, a pausing vote requires four in favor. Correct. Correct. And when is re a reapplication possible? Two years. Two years. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'd like to open up uh, the meeting, Deerfield Industrial, LLC of 5 Industrial Drive West, South Deerfield. The applicant requests a special permit to utilize the east end of the parking lot at 5 Industrial Drive West as a contractor's yard. Approximately 50,000 square feet of otherwise unused parking area to be used as leased area for trailer storage. So would anybody like to come forward and make a presentation? Uh, Matt Plotkin for Deerfield Industrial. Um, so I guess I would first request uh, if the board has received our letter from our attorney. Which we should have, have been this morning? We have, yes. Okay. The, uh, it, it arrived this morning. We do have it. We all have a copy of it. Okay. And all members have read that. Pardon me for one second. Yeah. Can you say your last name one more time? Plotkin. P-L-O-T-K-I-N. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All members have read that letter. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Um, so I just have some couple visual aids of just the area that we're talking about. Can I approach? Yes, you may. This is just simply a Google images. So this is the... This is the, has to speak up. This is the east side of the parking lot over here. Um, so we're just talking about this area here. Um, this is a current overview of the building. This is much more recent. Um, so these are actually, this is three trailers pictured here. So they're parking along here up, up to about the, the light post here on either end. Okay. So that's the area in concern. Right here? Yep, exactly. Yep, and then they would be over here as well. Okay. Here you go. They can come up here right now. Um, yep. And I'd like to offer anybody wishing to come up and take a look at these uh, photos. Set up right here. Point of water. I know I'm getting old, but all the time hearing is bubble. Yeah. Okay. 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 I can't even see his face. So is there some way you could speak it to the mic so everyone here can hear it too? We'll do our best. Yes, we'll try harder. Yeah. Thank you. Is you good with it? Okay. Anybody else want to look at the aerial photograph of the layout? No? Okay. Anything else to add, Matt? 
Um, no, I mean, we just, we simply don't use the area. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just trying to generate some extra income from that particular portion of the lot. Okay. So you, any of trailers belonging to your company? We have one trailer. One that trailer. Is registered okay. to us, and, correct. And who else? The trailers that are stored there, um, yep. Yankee Candle, who Yankee is Candle. another occupant of the park. Okay. I was just checking to see if we ask our questions now or if we wait until. Yes. Okay. yes. Right now. Yeah. Okay. So that it's only the only use for it will be trailers parked there. Correct. Okay. Are there any hazardous materials that no. will be stored? Nope. Uh, the trailers are empty. Okay. How many? Uh, our current lease is up to 25. There's potential to store maybe 35 there at the most. That's just what the actual space would allow for. So you're asking for permission to store up to 35? No, up to 25. Up to 25, yeah. okay. Uh, do I understand what I read? What I read was that this is going to be a place to store trailers. Is that Thank correct? You, Dick. Correct. Okay, who's going to control whose trailers go in there? Well, as we d determine who we're offering a lease to, right now it's Yankee Candle. That could change in the future. So it could become a trailer terminal, then, is what you're saying? No. Is that correct? No. It's just, for, it's just parking, essentially, for trailers. How is this going to be controlled? How are we going to control it? Who? Well, somebody has to control it. Uh, somebody might dump a, dump a trailer off there. We don't know what it's in it. We're, we're stuck with it afterwards. Oh. And this has happened in the past in other places. Okay. That could happen anywhere, though. Well, isn't this a business for, with storage trailers there? Isn't that the way this is written for your business? Am it's, I correct? It's, well, part of Deerfield Industrial LLC owns the land, so yep. it's part of their business to lease the space, yes. And all the trailers that will be stored there that you'll have leases with will be empty. Correct. Any other questions? Okay, thanks, Matt. Yep. Okay, so at this time, I'd like to ask anybody who um, would be opposed to the application to come up to the table. Thanks, Matt. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is Felicity Hardy. I'm the attorney for the Deerfield Economic Development Industrial Corporation. Um, previously, I had um, sent the ZBA a summary of our opposition to this application for a special permit. Um, it is my view that the uh, ZBA actually must deny the permit because um, the applicant has not uh, applied for uh, the right kind of relief. The right um, kind of what? The right kind of relief. Okay. So in the, ap the application um, asks for the ZBA to provide a special permit to uh, Deerfield Industrial LLC for uh, a contractor yard. Uh, that's wrong for several reasons. First of all, Deerfield Industrial um, or its uh, tenant Atlantic Furniture already has a special permit for that, um, for that location. Um, and that special permit is for uh, warehousing, which is what Atlantic Furniture is actually doing on the site. So um, it, at a minimum, it seems to me, um, if the applicant wanted to do something with the existing special permit, it should have asked to modify the existing special permit rather than asking for a new special permit. But the most important point really here is that what they want to do is not a contractor yard. Um, the um, the um, zoning bylaw defines what a contractor yard is. Let me just get that out. A contractor yard means premises used by a building contractor or subcontractor for storage of equipment and supplies, fabrication of subassemblies, and parking of wheeled or portable equipment. 
The, the key piece here is that the premises has to be used by a building contractor. At, neither Atlantic Furniture nor Deerfield Industrial is a building contractor, and therefore it cannot apply for or receive a legal special permit for a contractor yard. Um, I understand that um, the applicant may have attempted to modify the application by, uh, by virtue of a letter from its counsel that the board received yesterday. I got a copy of that letter, but I did not get a copy of the modification. But even if the applicant attempted to modify the permit, the application, that uh, modification is invalid because it's not, it was not subject to public notice under General Laws Chapter 40A. So I, I, in my judgment, the, the only action that the ZBA uh, can legally take in this situation is to deny the application for special permit. Thank you. Thank you. Paul? I'm in Okay, just wanted to I, ask if you Council, I'm, I'm uh, chairman of the Deerfield uh, Economic Development Industrial Corporation, which oversees the uh, operation of the park. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so Felicity speaks on our behalf. Okay. I didn't Thank you. No, nope, that's fine. If you wanted to add anything. Okay. I'm good. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions? Hmm? Rich? I'm going to make a comment statement. The... They really can't modify the permit they have for Atlantic Furniture because this is not an Atlantic Furniture project. This is a Yankee Candle project. So modify, they are basically sub-leasing for a different scenario. So they may have, or there may be a, a different definition that needs to be placed on this and uh, so even if they deny this permit, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, even if they deny this permit, it would be denied based on a contractor's yard. They can simply come back and apply for a warehousing or storage thing for Yankee Candle as a sublease, correct? I, I'm assuming that if the board were to deny this application, um, we'd have to go back to 40A and see whether or not uh, a second sub, uh, right. application for special permit would be permitted within uh, the two-year time frame. But assuming that that was true, at least it, the application has got to, dis to, uh, has got to um, describe correctly the activity and, and the application that is before the board tonight just doesn't okay. do that. I don't, I'm just... I'm the zoning enforcement guy right now, so I just, that's why I'm having this input. But um, they can't proceed without a permit from somewhere. And I don't believe that if this is denied because of wrong application, I believe they absolutely can reapply within a two-year time frame. And, but they have to revise their application considerably, okay? Um, we, I, don't get to enforce the DEDIC bylaws because they're not zoning bylaws per se. So that, I don't know how you get the DEDIC enforcement done. Well, what we're doing tonight is appearing as an abutter to the applicant. Okay. Um, so... Um, it is true that DEDIC has its own set of protective covenants. That's not w within the purview of the ZBA. You just are here to enforce the requirements yes. of your own zon yeah. zoning bylaw. And that's that what we're doing is simply um, uh, expressing our, um, our views uh, in our position as an abutter to the, to the project. So I guess I would say in all fairness, the applicant should be offered the ability to withdraw and resubmit his application. That seems, that seems that, correct That to seems me. to be the, the precedent. That I, I, think that that, I think I if the board has the, is, 
has the practice of offering the applicant the opportunity to withdraw. Mm -hmm. um, as I saw in the, in the prior application, it seems to me that this, this application is the, is, should be in the same posture. I think my recommendation would be to ask the applicant if he would, I have no vote, okay? But my recommendation is the zoning enforcement at this time would be to ask the applicant to withdraw and have the ZBA members get a uh, legal opinion from town council on how that application should be worded for future. That's up to you and that's the board. Up, that's up to the board. So that's all I got to say. Okay. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions or regarding this? Matt, um, after hearing what you heard, would you like to withdraw and without prejudice and resubmit? Well, I guess my question would be, would you be willing to seek town council advisement? We can. Okay. We can. Then yes, I will withdraw. We, we will. <laughs> we will, yeah. <laughs> but yes, I will withdraw. Yeah, yes, you will. Withdraw. Okay. Noted then that um, Matt representing Deerfield LLC chooses to withdraw the application at this time and wait for town council's recommendation on how the, the um, permit should proceed. Get a vote on that, Frank. Yep. Motion? Yeah, I make a motion that we vote to proceed okay. by asking town council. Okay, and I second it. All those in favor? Okay. Done. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. No. Okay, and uh, lastly, in accordance with Deerfield Zoning Bylaw, Chapter 179, Article 3, Solar Electric Installations Environmental Resources Management, on behalf of Mass, RE12 LLC has prepared this request for two zoning variances, site use variance and a setback variance. The proposed project involves construction of a 20 acre portion of the existing Deerfield Railroad property at 100 Railroad Yard Map, Map 7, Lot 5. The proposed use for this site is to install solar panels that will generate approximately 2.7 megawatts of direct current electricity. Solar generation greater than two megawatts requires a site use variance in commercial zones. The solar panels will be installed to the south of the existing rail yard on property owned by Pan Am Southern LLC. The zoning bylaw for commercial zones requires a setback distance of 100 feet from all property boundaries. The project is requesting to change setback to a 50 foot front and a 25 foot side and rear setback. Sir? Thank you very much, really appreciate it. Can everyone hear me in the back? I know. Yes. Yes, you can. Is it, is it turned on? Can you hear me? You tap on it. That one is working. We will switch mics. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your time and appreciate you listening to our presentation. My name is John Drabinski. I'm a geologist with uh, ERM, and we represent the client here, and my colleague. Uh, Kyle Purdy. I'm a biologist also with ERM. Um, thank you again for meeting with us tonight. Uh, as you alluded to, we are requesting two variances, uh, site use variance. Um, since, since this is a commercial two zone, um, this is a over, we're proposing a 2.7 megawatt solar, um, solar arrays. And anything over two megawatts requires that variance for the use. Um, and then also as, as we stated here in the public notice, um, we're requesting a uh, variance from the setback distances. So from 100 feet, we're requesting a 50 foot front and then 25 foot sides and rear. Um, so the front of the property is kind of that bottom left side, and that's River Road. So we're requesting a 50-foot 
setback distance from the road to the first panels. Um, the vegetation that's currently present between there is forested. Um, we're going to maintain that. We're not going to touch it. Um, and then for the sides and rear, we're requesting a 25 foot setback. Um, the rear is actually in this figure here, you can see in red when we got our certified abutters list, we have um, the, the parcel is actually split into two and the middle section that is the railway is actually leased by the Commonwealth of Mass Massachusetts to Pan Am. So even though Pan Am owns the area in red, they lease the middle portion. So we, this is actually an abutter of ours back to the rail. So that's why we're asking for the um, variance for setback relief too at, in the rear. Because um, if you would look at the aerial on the back side of here, I'll speak loud. Yeah. There's a mic right there. Yeah. The rear of the copy here is actually where the rail cars are and everything. So this is that first red kind of finger of it. And then you have the rear one. But this middle section here is a different property owner, and that's the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We're asking 25 feet to there. Um, Yep. And in addition, it's, um, it was a former Brownsfield site that has since been capped. Um, we feel as though with uh, the current gravel laydown area and an old loading dock that this is a good site use for the property. Um, you know, it, it's a clean energy that, that's giving back. Um, but yeah, I, I know everybody's got a lot of questions on this, so be happy to answer. Okay. I'd just like to hear more comment from the public. Okay. Is that awesome? Yep. Yep. Uh, actually, You'd like uh, to? Me? Yes, if you want to come up to the mic and uh, oh, yeah. state your name and address. You probably hear me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> believe that one is working. Oh, yep. it's a simple question. Okay. Oh, yep. I'm kind of. I, you mentioned 100 feet, and now you're talking about going to 50 feet, and then something about 25 feet on the yes. opposite side. So why was it 100 feet to begin with? Because that's the regulation. But would that be with whatever went into that position? Would whatever were to take that space, would you still have the same regulations? You mm -hmm. No. No, thank you. You would It's for solar only. Seriously? Yeah. Yes. 100 foot setback is for solar. And is that because they worry about, I mean, I know I meant asked these guys this before because we're right there, we're at 823 and I, you know, we have small kids in the area and I don't know how, I don't know how healthy that is. I know they say solar is amazing and it's helping all the environment and I truly believe in helping the environment, but I don't want to live in a, any more toxic spot than I have to, especially with the kids. Well, for me too, but, um, that's my main concern. What, what happens to our health with all of this? So close, because you're talking, I mean, I could throw a stone and pretty much hit it from, I'm the closest one to it. Yes, uh, actually there's no uh, risk at all. Um, Mass DLER has a full publication on discussing the hazards of, or lack of hazards with solar installations. And I think as everyone knows, the former lake asphalt the plant is right there, which has been cleaned up and covered. We can address that as we go forward. So the impact on the environment uh, from the solar array and operation of solar array is basically minimal. There's no sound, there's no glare, there's no noise. There's so no, it's radiation. no radiation. There's no radiation. It's, it's very, very benign. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else with any questions? Like, Just oh, requesting okay. from some clarity as to Okay, did you come up to the, the mic? Map. Just state your name and your address. I'm Dana Levine. I live at 754 River Road. So I'm just going to switch this around. Yeah, of course. That's a good thing. Okay. In terms of, you said, what was the front, what was the back, what was the right and left? The front, the front is, left. we're requesting 50 feet. So this is the front. Yep. Okay, that's River Road. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're requesting going from 100 feet to 50 feet. Correct. Okay, so when you do that, does that mean you're taking out more trees? There will be some tree clearing in that, because that, the site right. is forested, right. part, portions of it are. Um, there are portions that are gravel road and there's old uh, concrete dock. Um, but yes, there are some um, areas that need to 
be clear to install the panels, but that area from that red line in towards River Road right. will be maintained. So okay. all those existing trees, those trees that are probably 40 to 50 feet in height will not be touched. Okay. So, the, so we the wanted to maintain is, that vegetative buffer between buffer. our project and you. All right, so the question is, going from 100 to 50 feet, does that re require you to take more trees getting that variance? more of no, I, I, I think the reason for the request is to uh, allow more panels to be constructed so that the project is viable uh, the trees will remain but uh, if it went in further there may not be additional trees cut because some of that is open space um, so you know, by putting in more panels you're going to get more shading you're not going to get as much sunlight because if you're going to leave the trees there or you're not cutting more trees you're getting closer to your buffer right or where the remaining trees or bushes are like for instance here in this section here mm -hmm. because there's wetlands in here are you at all asking that this part change because this is the south side mm -hmm. correct Right, we've right. been to the Conservation Commission and got an order of conditions to address that. We will not be working within the buffer zone. Or the, not in this section, no, no. we're just talking this section. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, um, trying to think of where all the trees are. So the trees are right in this section here, and then there's the platform yeah. that is, I believe it's right here. Mm -hmm. So there's not a whole lot of stuff in front of the platform, only maybe half of it. And then from like this point down, it's pretty um, wooded. And so I just want to make sure that, you know, is, is it going to be, the amount of trees that you're removing, is it going to make it a lot more visible to the road? Not necessarily, because we will have some screening along the road to protect the, the view shed. And if you remember, when you go down River Road, the topography drops down. Exactly. So when you're standing in River Road and you look straight across, you, you, may, not, you may not even see the panels, because the panels are only like eight feet tall. Okay. So if, for example, if it was developed commercially, you may have a, a, 35, store, a 35 foot building there. So you, that would, you would see. These panels you won't see. You know. So it's on the side, it's going from 100 to 50. 50. Yeah. And on the end, we're talking from 100 to 25. That's and right. then this side too, 100 to 25. Well, that's still the same property. So it would actually be, the, if you go down to the southern array, it would yep. be 25 feet from there. Yep. So 25 feet here. Yep. So that's where what you Bruce is. Bruce is. Bruce is. Yeah. Yep. We spoke to him about that, and he's maintaining his, um, his paved access road to the back half of his property. That sliver is a road right there, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Right right there. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's it. That's the road that goes out back, so he, that will be maintained. Yep. Yeah, he had comments during the Conservation Commission um, review process of our notice of intent, so we've been in talks with him about that and what he ultimately wants and wants to see. All right. Uh, the, I think one of the major things, especially where we are, is the effect it will have on the value of our homes, yeah, having this nice. in there. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned, especially, you know, with some of us who have bettered our homes over the course of the years that we have spent there, that this is going to affect us if we decide to sell our homes. So um, I don't know how to evaluate that until it happens and then realize people don't want to be a part of it because now they're dealing with the railroad, now they got solar panels, they have the sportsman's club. I mean, it's just, it's one more thing that you add to the mix when it comes to property value. So what are we doing to kind of rectify maybe any disparities there might be in the value of our home when it comes to the installation of these? I mean, how, how do we know? until the market, until it shows in the market? Well, I think the best thing we can do is protect the viewscape. I think the uh, parcel zone commercial 
So when you look at your zoning bylaw, there are certain uh, uses that are allowed in a commercial zone. So I think as a, as a community, you have to decide, is this a, someone comes in with a heavy commercial use, which is allowed by the zoning bylaw, you know, which, which is a better benefit for you as residents? And I think as residents, in, in my opinion, and obviously I think I have a biased opinion, I don't blame you for that, but I would think that the solar use is more benign than having uh, a 35 foot building there that may have some commercial activity. I mean, but that, that's a decision, I think that's a decision you know, that the town has to make, and that's the decision that as residents of communities, these are decisions we make to go forward. The use is benign. Uh, the use would be a very limited impact on municipal services. The town would gain some uh, tax revenue. Um, in, in 20 years' time, the lease would be up and perhaps it would uh, re regress to something else. So it's not there forever. It's, a, I believe, a 20-year lease with the railroad. That's something to think about also. All right. I guess I think all of our concern is that we're driving down yeah. River Road. You know, if you've got realtors running the River Road, and they're going to be demonstrating or describing to potential um, investors mm -hmm. about what the topography looks like and what they're viewing, and if that at all is going to affect any kind of real estate. So I think if we can be super sure that what do you, even because I know that we can see down to that deck where the railroad deck was. Mm -hmm. I, I, if we don't see it, I'd be happy okay. not to see it. And but, then there's one more hearing with the planning board, and the planning board's going to go through this in great detail. And perhaps that's where uh, you know we could uh, work with the community. Say, what type of screening did you want along? Maybe it's arborvitae. Maybe it's something a little bit ro more robust. But you're absolutely correct where the old co-op is. That's all been cut down, and you can see right into the rail yard. Right. Perhaps that's something we can mitigate very easily with okay. the appropriate plantings. All right. I have a question for you. Where is your property? I am off the map here. I'm just on the other side of this. So from what I understand is this section here is all wetland. So it's that will stay. That will it's stay. pretty much. Yeah. Uh, do we know how many feet that is? to my property. Are you the first property? You have a little solar you have a little solar panel in your yard right there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably I'm gonna guess at least two hundred feet, easily. Yeah, so we took the wetland boundary. Um, we actually uh, with the conservation commission they wanted a thirty party consultant to come in and review our notice of intent and they reviewed our impacts for that wetland area. We don't have any wetland impacts. The hundred foot buffer, that tiny little corner there. This one? Uh, other one? This the southeast south corner. corner. South right there. Yep. There's a small, I think it's less than two thousand square feet to the hundred foot buffer zone of that wetland. Okay. So if you were to go, you can kind of see the existing topography, there's kind of that ridge. Right. Yeah. So that kind of puts into perspective. But with this project, we wanted to make it viable. Um, one, make it worthwhile, but also we took resources in, in, into consideration first with the design, mm -hmm. took the wetlands, and then designed off of that. So we took the 100 foot buffer zone and built off of that. I would say from your house, you probably aren't going to see the panels in there because it's pretty thick woods. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I think the other thing is, is there's going to be a fence all the way around it. Yes. Okay, is there going to be any room, because the deer moved that way and have created a path, and you can tell when you get back there. Dana, uh, could I interrupt you for a second? This hasn't gone to the planning board, okay. and you're asking all the planning board questions. Okay. Well, no, no, I, <laughs> we, we can talk back. And I want to say that the fire department hasn't approved this, and the planning board hasn't approved this. Okay. I've reviewed all these plans, yeah. and I found that I would be asking the planning board a couple of questions on that design that you're looking at there right now, okay? okay? And I'll just point out one to you. Okay. There is no access to the rear of this property where they're asking for the 25-foot setback from the rails. There's no way to get a fire truck or vehicles back there. Okay, and I'm the fire. I've recommended to the fire department that they look into this. Okay, okay. Is that both and sections, a, Dick, or just the southern and a, section? And a few other. There's a few other issues. So, my recommendation to this board is, they don't have enough information okay. to 
make a decision tonight, and I'd like to see this board continue this hearing until they receive a report from the planning board addressing all your questions that I know you'll be at the planning board meeting. <laughs> Well, you're asking good questions, but the questions, yeah. this board, that isn't more quite the really. venue to ask those questions. Yeah. If the planning board doesn't address some of these questions, yeah. then when this board goes to do the setback variance, then that would be the time if, if the planning board misses anything right. but to ask those questions, because most of your questions would get answered. Okay. Do we have an idea as to when the planning board will have made their decision? Well, if I would. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but my, my suggestion to you would be to continue this meeting until you get a report from the planning board of some kind. Okay. So, so the planning they, board, excuse me, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. The planning board is meeting next Thursday evening, and based on our discussions with the planning board, they were hoping that the ZBA would grant the variances. The planning board was somewhat reluctant proceeding without the variance in place because they assumed that why would they opine on something when they were okay. not sure the variance would be addressed. We are willing to go at risk to you know, assume that the questions got answered, you folks would give us a favorable outcome. I well, hate to be in a catch-22 with a planning board. You're in a catch-22, <laughs> and here's your risk. The risk is if you fail at this meeting because they don't oh, have enough information. I don't want to bail. No, 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 yeah. I'm not saying that. I just okay. don't want to. If, if they vote on this tonight and they, for some reason, vote negative, you're completely done. Yeah, no, I, so if you haven't gone to the planning board and they don't have enough information to make their decision on, uh, I would ask Frank to yeah. uh, talk to the rest of the members and see if they have enough information. No, I think that's fair enough. I, I think we want you to make an informed decision. We would never say don't make an informed decision. That was going to be recommendation it was good to hear some background Absolutely. information um, and and other than those specific questions would uh, ZBA have any other other than site access and some well, of the other questions? His, historically the planning board has always ruled first mm -hmm. that's okay. historically okay this is kind of an unusual situation if I was sitting there I'd be asking a little few different questions I'd ask the height of the panel for example and then I know the elevation of the road. So then I would know exactly how much panel stuck up against right, exactly. it. was above the blacktop level. Mm -hmm. I'd be asking things like the reflections of the headlights on the panels going northbound, if there would be any reflections, or are these black panels that don't provide any reflections. These are some of the planning board questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are some of the planning board questions that I would be asking. Right. and. Uh being an ex-planning board member, when we've done planning board hearings in the community I, I come from, we would give an affirmative decision on a project with conditions that the ZBA or the Conservation Commission would rule appropriately. So I would hope that the planning board doesn't use lack of decision from the ZBA not to proceed. Well, but we'll, we'll see next, next Thursday. I think if you're on a planning board someplace else, historically you must know that uh, Generally, if one board passes something, the other board generally passes it, unless they've got a lot of conditions that are way out of whack. Exactly. Yeah. So that's all I got to say. From a, oh, no. can I ask the question? Okay. Yeah. From your folks' perspective, any other questions that we can answer tonight for you, other than what you brought up specifically to the ZBA? We I don't. List of what I'm not oh, going to ask, oh. and we'll wait for the planning board. Okay. okay. But yeah. there is somebody who would like to just ask a yeah, question. Have, yes. Okay. okay. Hi, uh, Steve Assing, resident Res uh, River Road. I'm at 795. Um, so the with the with the the variance being closer to the road, there's also a fence involved. Yes. All right. How high is that fence going to be? I believe it'll be eight feet. Eight feet. Mm -hmm. So it's so that'll be 50 feet closer than the the original on. You're calling this the front side. Mm -hmm. So you're going to move that out 50 feet closer to the road. Is the is the fence line going to be in the woods, in the trees, undisturbed, or is it going to be? The fence line would be most likely that red line you see on the map there. I don't have it in front of me. So the fence line won't be on the street. The fence line will be back in the woods. 
so you won't see the fin. So if you look down, going down River Road, going to the southeast, you should, I'm going to get back to your question, see the exact same scene you're seeing now with some additional uh, landscaping to cover that gap where the uh, old co-op facility was. Um, and, and is the fence going to be of a, a non-glaring, non-light reflecting we, type? We, like we, could make, we could make the fence black. Uh, typically, the CONCOM likes the fence to be 6 to 12 inches off the ground so the critters can go under. Okay. So that's all things we could discuss. Uh, um, Sometimes people like barbed wire on top of the fence. Some people don't like barbed wire. So it all, again, depends on what the planning board wants. Um, some communities consider fences structures. Some don't. So it depends. Uh, I know you don't. Uh, Deerfield consider a fence a structure. OK, well, I guess at this, I'm sorry. Did you want to? I actually have a question. Um, Could you um, maybe state your name again? I'm and Marcia. I'm sorry. And your first and last name and your address. Marcia Hayes, 823 River Road. Um, I was just talking to Dana, and she mentioned something about there being a transformer uh, on the property because of uh, where is that going to go? Not at 823, right? No, they're uh, they're not transformers, but you're generating DC right. current from the. Uh, uh, sun and have to transform it to uh, AC current. So, yes. the, so there's units out there that will transfer the electricity. Now where are those? They, they are shown on the map. You'll see um, the little rectangular figure. Uh, rectangular. Uh, I don't know. That, would, that, mean, that means nothing to me. Okay. <laughs> Show me the where they are. <laughs> are they near my house or your house? Oh, on the other side. And they're basically very quiet. You don't hear them. Yeah, right. Oh, that's, that's what I was trying okay, to do. So that one's next to your house. Oh. And that's right. Yeah. So there is one right next to us. So next Thursday is the planning board where people with all these yeah. questions yes. could continue to get these yeah. answered. Yeah. Right. A lot of these are planning board questions. Great. Yeah. We understand that. So, <coughs> last question. Yeah. So, so the question is, I mean, with, with you guys are looking to get the variance, right? So you're going to make this footprint print bigger. And in in sense, putting all this equipment closer to the outskirts of that area. So I, I guess that's the concern: is that she, she's worried about the the transformer inverter, whichever piece of equipment it is, being closer to her house on one of the borders. But these these are the transformers up here. I'd say they're inverters. They convert from DC to AC. Okay. Yeah. Because the transformer usually steps up and steps down electricity, just really inverts. Yeah. Okay. okay, well, at this time, I'd like to make the mo a motion. Uh, Bob? Lynn. Lynn wants to speak. I thought you were raising your hand for him oh, yeah. when I saw you point over there. I apologize. The one you raised your hand, you pointed to. Oh, okay. Could you come up to the mic then? Um, I apologize. I thought you were saying that he was going to speak for you. I'm a little short. Sorry. Hi, Lynn Rose. I live on McClellan Farm Road within like a mile and a half of the railroad yard. And um, I'm here kind of in two capacities. Um, I did some research before I came, although I still needed to get more information. A um, couple things about who I am so you understand where I'm coming from. I was on the planning board for seven years when we wrote the solar bylaw. So I have that hat and some thoughts about that. But more importantly, um, I've been overseeing the railroad, the cleanup. We know these songs very well. At the railroad, there's a number, over 10 hazardous waste sites at the railroad. This particular site is a brownfield site. Um, and I have some concerns. And I'd like to give you some background so there's a context. I think there's some other regulations that need to be addressed, not only through the planning board, but through the mass contingency plan, which is the state super funds. Um, regulations. So just to have a context, um, no, of course it wouldn't work if I, sorry, I was just trying to be organized when I get up here. Um, so one of the things to know is that when we cleaned up, when we got them to clean up lake asphalt, there was a section of the site that's now being proposed, right, for some of the panels. Is that correct? Yep. No. Um, that, Keep going, Lynn. We'll answer questions. We know, okay. we know, we know each other very well. Yes. Um, so there's a portion of the site that is still contaminated, but under the mass contingency plan, you can do a, a solution. 
um, that in this particular case that would be monitored uh, in perpetuity because they would do both. They put a cover of clean, there's contaminated soil with asbestos. And so there's clean fill on top of that and then a vegetative cover. So um, in addition, they were, they were required, and if you want, I can give you, um, I can submit my notes if that would be helpful. It's a lot of information if you're trying to keep track of it all. Um, so the vegetative cover is then supposed to have what we call an activity use li limitation, which is a deed restriction, which restricts, like any deed restriction, what you can do with that particular property. And that's what enables them to leave the contamination and, and do a soil cover. Otherwise, they might have to put like a, um, well, they still might need an AUL, but like a, a more uh, like an asphalt cover or something like that. But right now, it's just soil and, and um, plants. There's another piece of this is because it is a hazardous waste site under the mass contingency plan, as a neighborhood, we apply to be a public information plan site, which means that we get to review the reports and proposals and things from the railroad regarding those sites. We have not had the opportunity to do that. The only reason I know about this was I got calls from a number of people in the community to come to bring information. So I would like to make some, I would like to, there's a number of things that we need to find out, like whether or not the state requires them to revise. They have to submit remedial action options and they bring that before the community and the community gets to weigh in and comment. And in order to do that, not only do we educate ourselves as a community, but the town has a consultant we've been working with for like 10, 15 years to oversee these sites. So we would like to have our town consultant who works on the hazardous waste site, very familiar with the site, look at these plans. I'd like to know from the state department, the DEP hazardous waste site cleanup, whether or not other documents are going to be required to be submitted under the MCP because they're changing the proposed use. Um, and, you know, typically with the brownfield, you know, there's, there's reports and monitoring, and I read the most recent one. Something to know, too, about this site, it should have been closed out year, years ago. They have about five years to close out and do all of what they were supposed to do. They didn't. The last report said that they were going to close out winter 2018. Um, which I interpret was last year. They should have had the activity use limitation. There is not an activity use limitation. I want to know if they plan to put one on it. If so, is it going to change from the original intent? I would like to know whether or not the vegetative cover is going to stay. We're going to look at something like asphalt that maybe uh, could handle the weight of the solar panels, things like that. So. I would like to check with the state. I would like to them to submit the report to the public information plan group so that we could submit it to the, the town's um, consultant. Um, so those are, those are pieces like, so my, question, so my question to them would be like, have they submitted a revised, any of the revised phase plans, you know, remedial action plans, or is this, you know, how is this being addressed? So with the state, so that's one question. And, um, Will you be attending the planning meeting? Planning board meeting oh, yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it's also it's to understand this is a complicated site. Mm -hmm. It's a brownfield site. Um, and I think my other hat, my other hat here is that when we put this um, bylaw into place as a planning board, we thought a lot about whether or not we wanted these really large industrial size installations. And I understand it's a railroad yard. The problem is it's adjacent to a residential area. It's right across from a residential area. So my comments to ZBA is to take that into consideration that we really did think a lot about the size and these possibly being in proximity to residential areas. So um, this is all great, great information, yeah. but we need to wait for the planning That's board fine. meeting to a occur first okay, okay and, and then we can address all of the concerns and okay and I go guess from there could you explain to us what the process would be after the planning board would it come back to this board yes it will okay yes, it we will. have an opportunity to speak come? yes okay yes you will okay great. thank you Thanks. Frank Lynn the only subject before this board is whether to allow the setbacks or not okay right. yeah. so what they need is they need a recommendation from the planning board 
whether to allow the setbacks. Everything you said is fine about the environment and all that stuff, but it isn't for this board. It's just a setbacks, and so that's why I'm recommending to them to bounce this back to yeah. the planning board to do exactly the things you're talking about. So. I agree. I think the only thing that was important, the, the, the point that I just want to pull out, is there may be some other regulations that everybody needs to take into consideration. So okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank Could you. I just answer that quickly? We'll be fully, we are fully compliant with the Massachusetts Contingent Plan. I'm the LSP of record, and I've been working out there for 15 years. We have one additional thing to close out the site, and then we will be closing it out. This is no different than putting a solar facility on a landfill. Most of the landfills in Massachusetts are capped. So I just want to be clear, the environmental concerns are, will be uh, fully addressed, and we're fully compliant with the MCP. Okay. Yes. If the planning board will probably well, address well, it, yeah. But yeah. I think we have to grant the buffer. We have to grant the, the variance or whatever, and that's one of the issues mm -hmm. that I would be looking for is how much more noise will there be? Maybe, maybe there won't be any, mm -hmm. but that's what people are going to yeah. be looking for is that, that that's a question I think people are going to want. Right. Well, once we know what the planning board has to say, maybe it'll yeah. it'll uh, answer some of these questions, and we you know we can move on. So, at this time, I'd like to make the motion that we delay voting on this until the planning board meets. Continue the hearing. And we're going to continue. continue the hearing after the planning board meeting. Um, well, you have, you have to pick a date, Frank. What's that? You have to pick a date. That you're okay. going to continue it. Okay. Um, so the planning board meets next. Thursday? Thursday. Thursday? Thanks. And, sir, to answer your question, DOER has done a number of studies on okay. noise, and we'll, we'll submit that to the, the town. It's a, very good, it's a very good study by the state of Massachusetts. So it's a good question. Why don't we do the 22nd? That's the yeah, are we, can we do any Thursday? Sure. Is that 22nd is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Okay, okay. the 15th. The 15th? 15th acceptable? Okay. And Bobby mentioned the waiver? Yes. Okay, so at this time I make the motion to continue the move the uh, hearing. the hearing until the fifteenth. I second it. Okay, all in all in favor? Okay. Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. We appreciate discussion okay. and appreciate your efforts. Thank you. We've got a couple other items here. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, not yet. We have to review some correspondence here. Um, accepted the minutes. So the last thing is to just receive all of these letters that we received this week from abutters um, to the ZBA, proposed ZBA do all, variants. Do we all have a, a stack yep. of those letters? Yep. I think we all do. Okay. Yes. Okay. I do. Okay, and there's an, is there any other business? No? Make a motion. I make a motion to we close our meeting. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the meeting is closed. <laughs>